Good morning, Insta friends. Or at least this morning where I am. I don't know what time it is where you are. But uh, I am really looking forward to today. Oh my goodness, it's going to be good. This is going to be good. Deb Sandage is my guest today. Um, I say my guest, it's sort of like, you know, coffee talk. <laughs> uh, we sit around and chat about things and she and I have been kind of uh, talking about a few things, and here she is. We'll give her a second here to, to get into the live, which always takes a second. There she is, the gorgeous Deb Sanders. Hello. Hey, it's nice to see you. How are you? I am good. How are you? Very good. Thank you. That is awesome. It's so good to see your face. Oh my God. I'm really excited oh my about gosh. today. I know. I've missed you. I feel like I we know. always caught up everywhere and haven't I seen know. you like for real in years. So I know. <laughs> it's good to I know. See I'm like, I know. And so when we were getting our schedule together, we were both sort of booked out. So I'm like, oh my God, this is great. But so I wanted Deb here when I started today's live because I had a few things. I, it, it, it came to me this morning. This whole thing, this whole live series is you know, for photographers, but me being me, it's, it's always got to be, you know, a little something more than just photography is how I am. So this morning it came to me, spirit moved and wanted to say a few things to all of you. And I wanted Deb here when, when I said this to y'all, when I started these lives for photographers on Fridays, um, I think one of the first ones, if not the first one was a solo uh, live that I did about purpose. And that's sort of been a loose thread throughout all of these. And I wanted to start that way purposefully <laughs> because we have a very powerful voice when it comes to photography. Visuals are way stronger than words. Picture is worth a thousand words, they say. So, you know, as a, as a photographer and as a, as a photography teacher, with, which we both are, you know, we get asked, how do you do what you do, right? Well, I can tell you so many sliders and so much about your cameras. And honestly, in the grand scheme of things, it takes, what, half an hour to learn how to take a picture? <laughs> but then what? What are you going to do with this incredibly powerful voice you have as a visual creator? So um, I just wanted to make that point because what we're talking about here really is a quantum Thing. You're going to hear me talk more and more about this because it's really important. It's quantum, it's spiritual, it's energetic, it's an imprint of your matrix, your voice, your, your who you are onto a light stream. Photography, our medium is light and time, people. This is quantum. So what they've determined with the quantum stream in physics, in quantum physics, is that the stream itself, the light stream itself, in all of the experiments and all the tests they've done all these years, is completely influenceable by thought, uh, emotion, expectation, feeling. It is, it's altered just by the presence of humans in the room or in the space. So what do you think that gives us as photographers? It gives us an incredible incredible power, an incredible tool. So when I started this whole series about purpose, I wasn't intending to be sneaky, <laughs> but this is actually what I based my artist voice photography retreats on for the last six years, which of course that's going to be a topic for me and Deb who used to travel the world and teach. Oh my God. But this was the you know, that was the impetus for these retreats, and that's what we did. And they ended up being days full of unexpected miracles and magic and quantum creation. And everybody would look at me and say, are you doing this? And I'm like, no, you are. <laughs> you are. And that's the thing. That's the power we have, and that's the empowerment and the inspiration that I wanted this series to be about. Not that we wouldn't talk about gear or cameras or anything. It's not, it's not that we won't. It's just, it's such a limited part of the greater conversation. So it's important, you know, Ansel Adams even said the most important part of the camera is the 12 inches behind it. Just saying, just saying. <laughs> so yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to kick off today with those thoughts, which, which kind of brings 
you know, into words what it was I was thinking when I started this. And Deb is the perfect person to um, carry this conversation on and just see where we go. I didn't have this <laughs> super planned out, but um, she is such a creator of light and, you know, thought and feeling and emotion that I know she's going to have a lot of really interesting things to say. <laughs> And we're going to try and open it up at the end for questions. I know I always say that, and then we get off on a thousand topics. And I, I try to honor your time and keep it to an hour. But we're going to try and do that. So <laughs> good morning, Deb. Good morning. It is, again, so great to see you. And it's so interesting how things have evolved, you know, in recent, you know, how we become re reaching out. You well, know, and, and this, is, this is why this is even more important, because yeah, what are yeah. we doing? What are we going to do next? We have incredible power in manifestation and creation, and that's what we have to be focusing on. Exactly. And, that's, and photography is a perfect medium for that. You know, there's, mm -hmm. there is an energy in, in imagery and a power and influence and, and inspiration along with education, and those are all such interesting elements to me. It's like how... Yep. You can put something together when you think about what you're you're shooting, but then, like you said, it's it's the thought process. You know, it's the why. You know, we've got something, what it is, but then how and why. Those right. are such important elements in in presenting an image. And yeah. Sometimes yeah. It's, uh, I would say almost unconscious that you think about it because usually there's a way that when you see the subject and you, you have there's an instinct how you want to be able to present it, but then there's like the alternatives and, and then right. also just saying okay well let's just put this all aside and do something totally different you know and that creative process I think is a yeah. wonderful driver yeah and I wanted you know I had a, a teacher a mentor earlier in my life um, spiritual life voice who was actually originally my voice teacher and then our training went many years and well beyond just voice but see it started with voice because your voice physically because I was a voice coach for 25 years one of the things you learn about a voice is it is an instrument designed specifically to broadcast who you are beyond the words it's designed to, to carry forward the imprint of who you are so energetically virtually emotionally health-wise so it's, it's it's as distinct as a fingerprint so when you hear somebody's voice you know who they are you know how they feel you you know, you know so much about them just from hello. In it, that's not an accident. That's that's our design. So the thing about voice in art, it's the same thing. It's just that the quantum field, instead of just your vocal cords, is what carries that forward. So you know, learning photography is uh, it's a superpower. I swear to God, it really is. Um, I want to roll the tape back a little bit to last year. <laughs> or a little more than that now, you and I both made our living traveling the world, teaching photography, you know, me doing my artist voice and you doing your workshops all over the world. How has life been since all that? Ah, oh, you know, that, that's a huge question. <laughs> huge, it's huge. Yeah, just summarize it, you know, in, in a sentence. No, I, it is a huge question. Maybe we do this again. I don't know. But yeah, it's a huge question. You know, and I think... I think it was, you know, to be able to realize what was happening at the time, you know, because we really didn't know how long term or short term, you know, what was in it really hard to like, you know, I could see how this was going to roll. So I, one of the first things that I thought of was um, trying to be as healthy as I could. You know, I know that that doesn't always matter, but, you know, personally, you know, it does so I matter. Start, I, I, I started to, um, so I had just like a, like a checklist. So I started to, I started to row right before this, and that was very important to me. So I really, I felt like that was an aspect of control, you know, and something I could tick the box, you know, that, okay, I did this today. You know, that was one thing that I could do to move forward and, 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 to, and to go through this. And, and then I started, as far as artistically, it was important to try different things. So that I began to think about, okay, well, there's opportunities here, you know, it's just a interesting way for me to sway my mind of, of thinking, you know, what can be different. So I wasn't going to travel so much. In, and, but I also felt it was very important to reach out. And I think more so even now, it's, it, it, it occurs to me, like, how people will say something, you know, that picture meant so much to me, you know, it just changed my outlook. And for somebody to reach out and say that to you, just like, it takes my breath away. And to know the impact, that influence that you might yeah. have. But yeah. 
right now, you know, people are thinking about oh, what can we do? What can we do to improve our photography? How can we see things differently? What are the alternatives to the way I've been doing things? What might I try new that might be fantastic? And so I tried to apply that thought process. And I did try a lot of different things. You know, I bought a waterproof housing for my camera. <laughs> and so took that um, and, and did some different things. You know, I said, wow, I love to photo the photograph at the beach. It's very peaceful. I can get to the beach, you can get to the mountains or, you know, you know, whatever you can do. So I'm thinking right. of the things that I can do. And so, you know, I've been photographing the beach like this, uh, you know, for a while. What happens? I really want to get low, you know, I change my angle. It's a little technical part, but it changes the dynamics of the shot. Do so you really dive? Like, where did you, where did you go underwater? Oh, I didn't particularly, well, I do not dive, but I do snorkel, but I, Oh. bought the camera at, at an angle where I could put it in the water or I do actually go um, swimming with the camera. I took it down to Juno beach and, and just went under and took pictures of like strangers. <laughs> and I would talk to them like, oh, seriously, I did this. I was in the, in the water, in the water with the waterproof housing. And I met um, a guy who was on a paddleboard. I never really looked at a paddleboard from like, you know, so I'm shooting. So I'm, then I kind of start talking to him, you know, pretty, you know, when the water is a really good distance away. And I learned, you know, he's an environmental person. He's doing a lot for the waterways and the dream. You know, like so many new friends sort of that. But I love the pictures, you know, half in, half out of the water. It was such oh, I interesting... love those. I love those. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I love those. So it was so much fun. So I, I at the beach, I thought, well, you know, it would be really cool instead of just approaching it from my, as we all do. You know, often we're just standing, we're shooting here at eye level, you know changing the dynamics of the shot, changing the perspective. And I, and I love to do that. I've talked about doing that, but I thought, what if I get the camera in the water right down there in the sand, you know, as these waves are crashing, you know, of course I got a little wet, you know, the camera is fine, you know, because got the housing, but I really got a different feeling. And, um, and we talked about, you know, there's a picture that I had posted. We talked about this um, picture, but the idea of it was, I like the picture, you know, it's cool, it's fine, but really wanted something more. So then that led me to like, wow, you know, back when I first started photography, I did a lot of like image overlays and double exposures and things like that. And then in the process, the road map that took us into teaching. And so those things almost, it's almost like your artistic path goes a little bit different direction and your teaching path is heavy straight. And, yeah. you know, and so it brought me back to that concept of, wow, you know, um, what happens if I do a double exposure? So I shot the beach and then uh, the, the water and the, as the waves are rushing in, I took another shot and I put them together and it was just so much more rounded. And they had that <laughs> how you did that. that was, yeah. You don't have that somewhere you can just like do the flippy and show people what that is. Do you somewhere handy? Can I do the flippy? Um, yeah, do the flippy. That's that's my new dance. Actually, it's on my Instagram. Yeah, I'm not sure I could do that. Uh, I might have a picture. You just have to point your camera. You just have to point your your phone at it and then hit the um, which is the one that flips. I don't know. Oh, it's the little two little arrows. It look like Actually, that. Actually, might be able to do it a little bit different way since we're in the improvisation here. Let's yeah, it's see. totally improv. This is this is interesting. This is by the way, I all my friends I'm having on, you know, want to talk about talk about photography in this way um they, they're all like instagram live version and so is deb she's never done it before um which is <laughs> yeah. like i'm introducing them to a whole new way because this is like i i do a uh, or did do a podcast it's still out there i'm just not doing new episodes right now called the woo you know it was all very woo all of my woo thoughts and everything but it took it, i love it but it takes too much time to produce and i just don't have it mm -hmm. so lives are great because you just show up it's, it's so, a little garage, a little seat of your pants, but this is not quite what I exactly what I had been put on my Instagram. You can see this first there picture. It is. Yeah. Yes, the one on the yeah. <laughs> With right the, down. The, yeah, yeah, that one right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have so actually pretty. Yeah, this microphone is like locked down. Um yep. so yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's so there's an interest in a, um it, it was really fascinating to me. So once I did it and put it together, I was like, oh my God. So I had to do more, you know, it's like, yeah. but I started working with double exposures this year in a little bit different direction. Cause again, we talked about like doing things that were sort of off the beaten path. And I don't really like to take, I'm not a portrait photographer. I like to take pictures, but I'm not, yeah. I mean, it's not like my, my life's calling. But during this time, you know, it's like, there were some things I really wanted to do. I really wanted to learn more about um, the double exposures. Some of the ones that I saw, 
oh, uh, one of the talk, one of the ambassadors, um, Andrew Hancock, had done some fabulous stuff, and I was so inspired. I loved, I loved the idea of it, and so, and I thought, well, you know, I should be able to do that a little bit differently because there's really two approaches to this this type of uh, concept. So, I started doing it. I did this, um, but it wasn't, a, and I want to say this wasn't about the end result. It wasn't about, it wasn't a picture of me. It wasn't a, um, it wasn't about the flowers that I had used. It was really the feeling, the vibe, the, the message that people, I think were coming away with. It was like, um, sort of an energy, but it was a, um, it was a positivity. So I had, it was, you can't really tell it's me, but there were a lot of flowers and, and it's just summery and it was really a feeling. It was, it was, is it on your Insta too? Can people see that there? See, yeah. um, one of my, one of my, uh, like right hand people, Cameron Weir, just put your Instagram link in, in the chat. So people oh, who want to find you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, at Deb's, at Deb Sandage. Yep. Um, you yes. can see it, but it's, so do you, ha can you hold it up? Can you just so people know what to look for? Yeah. Because I yeah. love your description and I think I know the picture you're talking about, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I have and this, um, silly computer that I don't usually use. So I know this is see the, see the pants. Yeah. 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 Let's Somebody see described Instagram too. live as, um, you know, it's all, it's all real sweaty. You just, <laughs> you just show up <laughs> however see. you are. Uh -huh. <laughs> No pressure. I didn't. I didn't warn her. She didn't. I didn't really know what we were going to get into. So. Oh yeah. So yeah. I have family here. So uh, my, everything's been sort of like rearranged, and um, my son has been using my office. <laughs> so which oh, is really, really great. No, it's great. But uh, I don't have the regular computer. But I will. I will. I will um, follow up with that. Oh, actually, yeah. you know what? There's. This is not the one I wanted to show. I'm going to put all your links in the comments of, or you know, in the description of this because it'll go on my IGTV and so I'll put all your links in there so people can look at it later. So no pressure if you can't find it. Oh no, it's just this silly computer. It's not, it's not happy here. I've got it here. Let's see if that works. So forgive. No, nope, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. That's all right. <laughs> oh yeah. That's all right. It, it's fine. Anyway. It's just, so you did this really cool. So I love your double exposure. Uh, Thank approach. you. Thank you. That's yeah. So I, it, cool. It, so it becomes a little bit more rich, um, a little, it changes the message. So then, then it is a portrait, which, you know, again, mm -hmm. it's not my um, primary driver, but it, it, the, the end result was more of a feeling about something. So it was a, um, it was really interesting to do. So I did something that were really wild, like really like super high contrast. It was almost like paper dolls because you have a shape and you're yeah. filling that shape with whatever you choose. It could be mountains. Right. I did I did mountains. I did trees. I did um, pretty much everything because it's like I'm obsessed by the <laughs> you know you take it away. And then the flowers um, were were really interesting because it, it and, and the type of flowers that you use sort of changed the meaning. Um, I did one. I, I like to show you, but I I can't just yet. But I did it. Um, and my idea, my thought process was that I, I wanted to do something very Florida, very tropical, and, you know, and have it be just sort of representative, you know, of, of that beachy person or whatever. Mm -hmm. Totally changed. As I was shooting it, I was sh shooting the flowers because there's two distinct and different things. You know, I'm shooting, I'm shooting a silhouette, which is one thing. And the second part is I'm shooting flowers. So it's a very, actually, it's a very... Uh, precise kind of way because you how you shoot the flowers defines mm -hmm. you know how they are so right. as i'm doing this is like no i just i have this different vision it was really different vision so uh it ended up being a very um kind of retro uh, because of the 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 picture control the control of uh, the uh, the, right. the i say to go back to cameras but the way that the pick the flowers were it had a vintage look so it changed like the whole meaning of the shot so you know i, I enjoyed doing things like that so so the, anyway back to the point really is doing things that are different um new challenges you know uh -huh. so i have like a whole list of things that i would like to do with double exposures and and, and at the opportune time i really wanted to photograph like the neighbor's kids, you know, I have an idea, you know what I mean? Or just people yeah. in general, different people, yeah. but I can't really, you know, we're a little bit limited um, at this moment, but. Right. So there's this, but that's the great thing is, I mean, I started a whole new line of art. I, I just thought I was messing around and it turned out to be an entire new avenue of my artwork and website. And I'm like, well, that was yeah. interesting. 
Um, yeah. It started before. It just started before the whole thing happened last mm-hmm. year. But um, but then it was like, well, I guess I might as well just keep doing this. What the heck? It was uh, it was really fun. But okay, so which takes me to mm-hmm. I always wonder how to pose. It isn't. I don't know if it's a question or opening the door or an invitation, but there's a topic. Um, which relates to exactly what we're talking about, but women in photography, everybody's always asking me, you know, um, and I know that I get posed a lot of questions. Uh, let's say I get posed certain co- technical questions, mostly by men who, and, and this isn't a gender split, but it's like the focus will tend to be more about the gear on the one side and less about the gear on the other. And, it, you know, it's just something we, we're used to. And, and other things have happened in the photography world that are uniquely um, our own experience, <laughs> shall we say, that is, that is different. And photography traditionally was kind of a men's sport, and here we are. So what do you think the biggest difference is? I mean, and it's hard because we have always been women, so how do you talk about it? Because I, I, I've always been this, so I don't know what it's like being somebody else. But to the best of our ability – Women in photography, you have achieved so much. I mean, you're a Nikon. What is? What are the Nikon? I'm a, a Fuji, Fujifilm ex photographer, professional, you know, partner of Fujifilm. You're a professional partner of Nikon. What is the Nikon title? ambassador? Nikon, yeah, Nikon ambassador. Amb- yes. There you go. Well, p- right. Pure and simple. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so here, you know, here we are. We've done this thing. How did we get here? <laughs> so like, what? Like, how do you? How is our voice different? How is it, what does it add to the conversation? And how is it different, do you think, than normal perception? I don't know if that's, that's the right question. No, no, that's a great question. Um, I think there's a lot of answers to that. Yeah. Um, because I think when I first became an ambassador, and you know, I looked around me, you know, these, like you said, superpowers. <laughs> and I was like, how do I fit in here? You know? Right. It's, it's so interesting. You know, it's, I don't want to say it's intimidating, but, you know, it's like, yeah, I feel really, I, you know, want to be my best and I want to do everything I can and reach out as much as possible. But yeah, to answer your question, um, I think over time we realize that some, it's just how people think. So some people think, you know, cause it doesn't matter. Like you can go out and shoot for six minutes, a long exposure shot at these exact settings, you know, things are going to vary, but some people need that guardrail, you know, uh, directional arrow. It's like, how did you, that's very, very, very important. So I learned that some people need to know that. And so how did it occur to you to shoot that that way? You know, what was your thought process on, like, why did you know to put your camera down low? That why, you know, and again, you know, so again, there's just different people who think differently. So it's, I try to reach, you know, all all those. I mean, as far as like, you know, with the post, because some people say, well, to ask if you don't put the settings in, it's like, well, what are the settings? You know, they just have to know, but that, that how they think. And I, you know, you know, I respect that. I think that's really, really cool. It's some people are spreadsheet people, you know, they want to know, okay, eight seconds. If I, it, you know, gives them something to, to focus on literally you know, as far as right. how I can make the shot in my own way. So another person like, wow, I never thought about that. You would do that during blue hour. Oh, so you'd naturally get longer exposures, you know, or that you can create a different flow. So it's not such a, a literal thing as like a snapshot from your iPhone. Yeah, because I mean, don't stuff. you don't you find that if if you find out, or at least this is what I find is I if I find out what I always approach. Well, what do you like? If somebody really just needs to know how to run their camera, that's one thing. You know, that's just kind of like you got to get the basics out of the way before you can go to the next level. But the next level is really right above that because then it's like okay now you know how to go like this what would you like to do with that power (laughs) seriously i'm being a little facetious but not really because it's like well because i remember i just when you were talking i was remembering um one of my retreats in france we went to um island island of saint honorat which is uh where the there's these fifth century cistern monks I mean, they haven't been alive since the fifth century, but they've carried their tradition on. They make incredible wine, and there's a fortress there. I mean, there's amazing things to photograph there. And um, and so we were in the the uh, fortified uh, monastery, which is a little bit like a castle, but not really. Anyway, so I had a couple of beginning photographers um, kind of learning a new camera. And so rather than follow around and say, so let me show you how to use your camera, I was like, what do you what what strikes you in here? What do you ha- What do you want to see how do you want to see it well I want to I like 
okay, then here's what you would do to do that. Like, so in other words, you're getting the vision first and then teaching the skill to go to, to how to create that vision. Otherwise, because I knew with this person, if I started telling her how to use her camera to get lost, to get lost in that, then mm -hmm. her brain would go like this and, we, and she wouldn't take any pictures. So we flipped it around that way and she took incredible photos. And I she was that, free. Yeah. She, she was, was totally, free. Yeah. Right. And, <laughs> and seeing what she wanted to see, like learning this camera didn't, then be, was not an obstacle to seeing what she wanted to see and create because then she could say, okay, it's this. And she would describe it and show me and go, got it. All right, here's what we do. And then by the end, I'm like, oh my God, take pictures. And yeah. you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. And I don't know if that's a, if that's a, a woman thing. I, I've never taught men that way. I've had men reach over and when it was, my camera was on a tripod early on, you know, when we used to do a lot of photo walks, reach over and like make an adjustment on my camera and go there. No. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully people will, pick up on the cues that that's not cool <laughs> but, but well well to his credit he went and saw my my photos he hadn't didn't know who I was went and looked me up after came back a week later and said I am so embarrassed I'm so sorry and I'm like it's okay it's okay really it's not okay no, I, but it's okay you know no, so no, it was no. it, that's how people learn you mm -hmm. know and, and it, you know sometimes it's not saying anything it's just you know that they they pick up on it later I had a funny thing happen I remember I was shooting I had a lot of time lapses. I was in, in Chicago and, and everybody just is so gracious and so kind and they want to help. And, and she saw that yeah. there were some raindrops, you know, getting on my lens. So she comes over and she's cleaning off oh. my lens <laughs> during the time lapse. So, you know, it's like, um, <laughs> so, you don't touch a girl's <laughs> hair and you don't touch your camera. <laughs> no, it was, it was just funny, you know, and yeah. especially, you know, if, if I am teaching, especially something like that, it was very, short time frame so i i always like if i had the opportunity i know like our travel workshops are, are structured differently but if it was a teaching like i would try to go early and get a lot of shots you know so you know so that way you know as i'm shooting if as we're all shooting you know they still want to see my camera up there and what i'm doing and like yeah what's your what's that aperture exactly. you know? <laughs> and it's, it's a great it's a great education yeah. to, yeah, to learn yeah. that way it's easier because you're not being told you get to just go say oh and then think about it and think about how you want to apply it. I think that's a great way to teach. I have to stop here a second and do a shout out yeah. to Steve Skolsky. He's one of our uh, Fujifilm techs. He's Yay. super <laughs> awesome. And he, he drops by, checks in on me. Oh, um, that's super. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to say hi. So I appreciate that. And thank you, Cameron, for putting links in along the way. Much appreciated. Okay, carry thank on. Thank you. So, it's, yeah, yeah, really. Um, no, I, I, yeah. You know, as after. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, so the whole learning <laughs> thing, that's all I was just queuing, but you're, you're already on it. So go. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's, you know, I think that's just it. You know, especially at, at a location, it, everything is beautiful. I mean, yeah. you know, you know, and, and it's just, everything is a picture and it's just like, how can you interpret that picture? How can you make that personal to you? Um, right. How can, and if you're standing, let's say you're at a location or you're standing with like 12 other photographers, how can you make that how can you own that shot how can you make right. it uniquely yours you know as right. far as you know your own shot? If you're, and then you know and, and what are the alternates you know so obviously you're, we're d drawn to like a first like okay this is going to be my first shot but then what are the other things that and sometimes those other things are so much more important and weighty and maybe I won't even know that till I get home and go look at the pictures like oh my god I should have just done this you know I should have done this right. and so there you know there it is interesting so I think there's a certain there's a huge value in in image review and and also failures you know something I goof up on is a wonderful teacher I couldn't have learned it any better by knowing what I tripped up on you know what I can do better right. next time and and right. also just the alternate things like what are the ways I could do this different what are what are you know the bcds of of this um so you know that's what's so exciting about photography i think in general because there always is something new to learn which kind of circles back to you know what you've been doing you know trying to find um different ways to do things so you know underwater photography working more in double exposures um 
just, you know, different concepts, being able to spend a little bit more time. Um, and then also really realizing how important it is to share this because then other people see and then they can bounce right. their ideas off of that. So it's all interestingly connected in, in a beautiful right. way. So Well, and connected, you just used that word. I just think that's so important. And I think that, I think that is, is a, not that men don't, but I think women are naturally connectors. I just think that's, we kind of think in a more global circular sort of way where and and i think i think in an i personally i think in an ideal scenario we all have a good amount of both i mean we both know how to you know go for the hunt and you know get get the job done and do the through line boom in a in a you know um like male female energy is best balanced right so the more female way is kind of more circular and inclusive bringing gathering you know, that kind of thing, but with a balance of the hunter-gatherer, you know, a very primal, but the hunter-gatherer concept, I think a good blend is, is both. And I think, I think we oh, both sure. have a lot I, of that. Otherwise, I, we get anything done. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. You know, I think that's what makes, you know, the world go around, you know, it's just yeah. differences. And, 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 and I, it's so interesting how, how, you know, being a woman, Photographer is it's wonderful. I'm I'm super. I, I don't try. I try not to think about it in. Um, yeah, me neither. As a rule, yeah. until I'm talking to another one, and I'm like, do you ever think about that? Like, what is that? Yeah. yeah. You? <laughs> <laughs> but I look at that, you know, in an abstract way. Um, one of the things I learned during rowing was that you know you're in a, a let's say a class, and you know, you're rowing is is really I'm five foot six. I'm not terribly you know large, but it's six foot five guys are going to whoop me every time in a row because they have the power, they have the strength, they have the, you know, but there are ways that I can row to be stronger. Maybe they can't row at, at, a, at a lower split rate at the intensity that I can. So, you know, there's different things that I can do and different things that, you know, so I right. learned to, to think past numbers or try to learn to think past, you know, you know split times and meters and, and, and just think about the things that, you know, that I mm -hmm. can do. And as far as uh, row goes, but, yeah, it's um, it's interesting. I, I there's so many amazing photographers, and, and and I'm so grateful to that we're involved in the circle of you know I know it's that connected word again, but but in that in that circle of friends, and, uh -huh. and, and and it's not um, I I feel like in the photography world, it's been a lot of uplifting, and and people really will stop and and do things. You know, if I had. It's, it's you know and, and maybe work with you or, or talk with you and I you know I felt very respected and and um, and I don't know it feels good you know so I I understand that there's you know different roles and different right so you um a lot of our teaching has gone online you've done that too and I know we were both uh in fact you gave a keynote speech at the Sedona Photo Symposium that we just Thank did you. Yes. what did you do what yeah. was your what was your talk about for that it, one that was the essence of an image and it's really basically what we are conceptualizing here it was um it was more about like what the subject is which is what it is it's the, the subject and then how you might interpret that subject and why would you do that so it was the essence of an image just breaking it down not so much on content but but on the thinking process of how I would approach, you know, here we are with this beautiful cityscape, you know, why not just press the shutter at 160th of a second or whatever it is and freeze the action. And, but, you know, why would you leave that shutter open for eight seconds and what happens during that time? So, you know, it was, a, it was more of a thought process um, of what goes into an image so you know i like to do long exposure shots and that you know, yeah, you're oh my god you guys if you, haven't, <laughs> if you haven't seen her work and her long exposure work oh my god it's dreamy and oh. absolutely fantastic i love it thank you thank you yeah it, you know and that goes back to there's a very technical side to doing that but there's yeah. a terribly creative side too it's just um so at first you know because um we didn't even have 15 stop filters. We had like 10 stop filters and it's, that's really not quite enough. You know, so there was this learning the technique again through that, you know, trying to find out as much as possible. And I absolutely love, love, love because what happens in that time, you're showing what happens over time. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a process. So I, I, I shot, um, 
San Francisco. And I remember I was done shooting. I was so tired because I got up, I get up before sunrise and, and I came back and shot all the morning. And then I finally made it back to my hotel room. I was pretty well, I needed to like charge some things, including myself and, and get things together. But I looked out the window and I was like, oh my gosh, the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge. And there were some fantastic cloud structures that were beginning to develop. And normally it's such a dry, you know, it just didn't mm-hmm. have that. And so it's always been, so I mean, I literally ran back to the Embarcadero, which is the seawall um, right there and took pictures of the bridge, but it, what, I didn't want to take like a picture of the bridge. I wanted to take a picture of what happened over time. So the six minutes that I shot this, um, so there was a, there's, you know, kind of an interesting structure, an old dock, which is my thing. I love old docks. So you uh-huh. know, I was able to incorporate that it, it, with the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge, which is it's so beautiful. It's more contemporary structure. So you have the old and the new, and there's sort of a flow through the image. But what pulls it all together is this cloud structure that is developing over time, and you're capturing this over six minutes. You know that just that's a long flows. exposure. It is a long exposure, and, and I can't really appreciate. I mean, I have an idea of what might happen over time. I might, you know, I'm just, you know, I could, I don't know exactly what's going to happen. You know, so, so it's it's kind of interesting. So to see what happens over time. So when the picture is done, you know, and I'm looking at it, it's just it's so exciting. Yeah, because I had, you know, had an idea. So yeah, so the long exposure stuff is, um, it is so. You know, there's really, a, you know, a bit of a technical learning curve but it's so exciting it's, mm-hmm. it's really exciting and, and so that's why i think i tend to get a lot of people ask me it's like so how did you control the light six minutes no 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 that picture would be blown out it's like no 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 <laughs> yes that's why you use neutral density filters what's a neutral density filter what is that right. that controls light you know it helps you control light when you reach the limits of your camera so it allows you to have creative control so you know it's right. kind of how it's explained and uh, so yeah. So that's so you that's, use did you use a fifteen stop for that? I generally use fifteen stop fil- what, uh, neutral what, density. What filter. filter system do you use? I've been using Nisi. Yeah, so the Nisi filters. So um I use Scene Ray also. Uh-huh. So it's just um, the filter holder was really generous and nice for my brand new, you know, a, a lens that I had. They made a specific filter holder for it, which was which is fortuitous because it, I like it's not just the neutral density filter it's right, the right. graduated neutral density filter so there's a grad and then there's the neutral density but I love that because it illustrates what happens over time so it's not such a literal image and, this, well, and, and, this, and the magic is it's not what you see <laughs> you don't see that yes. with your eyes and then you yes. see what it it's the like you said it's the over time thing but then you look at it and it's like oh that's like magic oh my god yeah because even if, cause if you painted it, I mean, it would be really cool as a painting, but you'd have to imagine what it looks like over time, where we actually get to capture what it actually looks like over time. And then you could paint that, but you'd have it you'd yeah. like that. And that's only that moment. It would never be exactly the same way, even if you did it right away. Which but this, I think you know, is so well, interesting. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, I when I do this, it's usually clouds are the main thing. And I think of them as being wind painted. You talk about painting. Yeah. But the clouds are, are basically painted over time. That's what happens. So you have these cloud structures that are, are solid, you know, at, you know, but over time, then you can see the stretch and, and yeah. that softens. And so, yeah, cool things happen over time. So I love it because it's not so literal. And I think that's what one of my drivers have been um, of recent, you know, I think it makes the picture more rich and it's very different than you know, mm-hmm. if you're standing with there. No one will really get the same shot, but that's not the end game. The end game is to have something that's meaningful and purposeful and to you. So, and, and again, you know, it's always a little bit of a surprise. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. I know. I know. People think it's interesting because, um, so when I started work doing my, I call it whimsical reveries. This is that other part of, you know, art art like and then even within that there's a more photo centric uh section where I actually use my photos really directly and then it kind of goes from there into then a lot of all of it being original so there's these different areas of it but one of the things that was really interesting to me and I don't know why I thought of it I think it was painting the clouds is as photographers we get used to thinking about um everything so in such a precise way like it has to be precisely this or the focal point has to be precisely that or the the sharpness has to be exactly 
and the freedom I found in the in the discovery about myself that I found was, oh, when you're just doing art, art, and I want to talk about the definition of fine art, by the way, in a second. But um, when you're doing art, art, it isn't precise necessarily, unless you want it to be. It's your interpretation. So I found myself having to make myself break the bounds of it has to be perfect, which was interesting. And I think maybe long exposure probably approaches that, you know, that break, because some of the questions I get asked as a, you know, ambassador or as a teacher or whatever, I realize in the course of the question, people are thinking like they got to get it so perfect. And I think that's a limitation myself. At least yeah. for, for me, it is. Anyway. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think exactly what you're saying. I think that that can hold people back. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're trying, because you, you have a, uh, an idea of what it has to be like, but in imperfection is reality and, and, and what draws you, you know, there's a certain charm so, uh, to certain things. So sometimes I, you know, I look at photos and, it, it, and I have a vision of what it's supposed to be like, but when something different happens, then maybe I feel like I fell short, but then when, really, when I review it again, it's like, oh my gosh, this was amazing. You know, this is, this is, you know, what I was going for. So yeah, I try not to, I have ideas how I want things to be, but I try to be also free thinking that, that what's going to happen if this wave well, crashes? Yeah, and I think, I, I don't jump it all over you here, but um, I think that goes back to the quantum thing, because I usually, like, my inspiration, like, you can see the diminishing, the, you know, lines behind me, but it's, it's like, the, the, I had a vision when I was young, it had to do with light coming through my body and going out and, you know, healing and all this crazy vision. Anyway, so when I go out and I create, I'm like, I have this idea and I know exactly how I want to do it. And like, if nothing changes, if it presents exactly the way I have in mind, then I know exactly what I'm going to do. But what I ask for, what I always ask for, and this is the quantum part, is that this or something better. You know, I'm going to do, I'm going to go out and do this. But if, but if there's something better, if you have something different in mind, you know, oh, creative, you know, force, um, I'm open. Let's do it. And so I'll go and then I just let myself go where the, the, the vision sort of happens and then it ends up different or better or sometimes just exactly or uh, which is the quantum thing because here comes the quantum or the inspiration or the creative force that comes in. And if you're awake and aware, you allow it to move through you and have your ideas and expectations and thoughts and let it form through you onto the pixels of your image. And that I think is a really incredible, important co-creation with the creative force that runs in more circular fashion. Did I just speak English or is, is that- No, crazy? it made total sense. It's very conceptual, but it, it makes it, it makes perfect sense to me. So, you, you know, you're going out with a structured thought of your, you know, your, your imagery, but you're open to things that happen. Right. Right. And, and, and embracing the changes, embracing, you know, the serendipity. Right. And, right. And I think that is essential. You know, when I, um, if I go to, let's say, you know, like the beach, you know, I have like a ritual sort of, I go, I always go like an hour before sunrise. And it's not that I'm going to get the same shots, but it, it's, it's, even though there's a structure in what I'm doing and arriving at a certain time, I'm setting up, it's still dark mm -hmm. and, you know, it's pitch dark basically, you know, but in that process, you know, things are totally different, you know, so it will, the rush of the waves will be softened, but they're all, you know, it's different. Maybe there's some stars that I never even saw that will be in the picture, right. you know, so right. you have these, you know, the structure of, in the, of how you're thinking uh, technically, but you're just open to all these wonderful things that are happening and you're embracing them as they happen and, and going with that flow. And that to me is just so energetic and so fun. I think it's so, inc it's awe inspiring. Um, it's like soft. Okay. So soft fascination. You look up, soft fascination it's fascinating <laughs> because <laughs> we have our because what you're just yeah what you're describing yeah you should it's really interesting because what you're describing is something we know so well because you go out in nature you go wherever you go and you're like fascinated with everything and we're like okay where's the story and what what are we going to present and what are all the different angles and how can we create it's a it is a form of soft fascination 
um, I used to, when I taught voice, I would literally teach people to soften the muscles around their eyes because when it's tight, it affects your voice. Oh. But also it does. It's crazy because of the way the nerves go through the brain and how it and neurologically, how it all affects, but also how it makes you think. And that's the part that also affects the voice because it's hardwired to who you are. But when they're even around your eyes, if it's like, if you think about it, when you're going out and you're being super like, got to get this, right? Like a hunter, like, it's like tense. I'm on a trophy hunt. The eye, the muscles around your eyes are a little tight. I've seen it in so many people. Um, and, and, when you do that, it changes how you see. It changes what you can see. Consequently, the voice with which or the voice you have to bring to the moment. So when, they're, when it's soft, it allows you to be your vision to open both internally as well as visually so that you might notice physically, notice some things that are maybe going on around you or behind you or above you or whatever, but also... Um, creatively speaking, notice ideas. Ideas will flow differently simply by relaxing yes. the muscles around your eyes. It's a crazy thing, but we're hardwired that way. So soft fascination, if you, if you do an internet search for that, you'll find all kinds of articles oh. and studies <laughs> about that and about awe, A-W-E. There, there's an, is an, and this is a big, a big part of my work and what I talk about because I always have, but I, but consequently, people will call me woo woo. Oh, she's a really good <laughs> photographer, but she's kind of woo woo. And I'm like, oh god, here we go again. But now, now there's actual studies with empirical findings about awe from specifically. Well, there's a few leaders in the field, but the one who kind of started it was Dacher Keltner, and um, so there's all these studies now, and and how it affects the brain, the brain patterns, the neurological systems, the sociological behavior. Um, the heart, the pulmonary system, your yeah, everything, your your health overall, um, how kind you are to yourself and others, and as well as all the physiological and mental and emotional aspects that this one stop shop of awe affects instantaneously. So what you're describing is a very holistic approach to life, to photography. It's like photography gives us the uh the thing to focus it on and, and how wonderful we can create that way. But it's actually a gift we give to ourselves and others when we, you know, show people this way because they too can create something that is amazing and meaningful, has a soul imprint and is also healthy. Yes. So appreciate the awe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Seek, seek the awe. The let awe. it, let it move through you. It's really fascinating. If you haven't ever actually looked at the, um, the, the, the studies and, and a lot of it, it's, it's a, fantastic rabbit hole to go down it really is oh my gosh yes and there's so many rabbit holes <laughs> but, right? but they're all fascinating I but know. i think the most simplistic you just describe in the most uh, eloquent way as i told you before <laughs> a wonderful way of putting words but it's just you know being open to the magic that's around you just being able yeah. to embrace it instead of getting so bogged down in the technical you just yeah allow that that visual freedom and 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 soak in whatever exciting is is happening you know for for me just maybe just that first moment that the sun peaks over the horizon or oh, seeing a that... star yeah it's oh, a I love thing, that right? i know you get all like oh, it's so exciting i know i know oh, and it here. happens every day it's an ordinary thing but there's magic in that and, yeah. I, and i think just being able to you know embrace that is, is so important i never get tired of that and do you ever notice the thing? I was told this a long time ago, and I think it's true because I, I, I've observed it a lot, but I'm like, does it always happen like that? I don't know, but somebody said that moment, the moment you're talking about, you know, where the sun peaks up, there's that moment where, you know how right before it comes up, everything kind of goes, and then it goes like that? Do you ever notice the birds go silent in those moments? Oh, my moment? goodness. It would be hard to say. You know, the beach usually is pretty... That's the uh, seagulls, and they're noisy lot, no matter what. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But here it's, in the mountains where we have so many birds, or even down in the flatlands where there's a lot of birds, I have noticed that. After they yeah. pointed out, this is 30 years ago I was told this, but I'm like, oh, it's always true. I'm going to have to pay attention for that. Yeah, yeah they do. They're kind of like pre-dawn, chirpity, chirpity, chirp. And mm -hmm. then there's this moment where you're like, Right before the, whoosh, everything wow. gets quiet, including that. It's crazy. So I don't know. It's, I don't know if that's always, but I've noticed it. 
is breathtaking. You know, it, it is a, it is a unique moment and, and people, you know, I, I'm shooting, but there's people that come down just to witness that moment, even be it sunrise or sunset. They just, well, they come experience. without cameras. Yeah, yeah. Just for the experience. Yeah. I think yeah. it's a, I think it's a deeply, I think we're, I think it's a deeply spiritual thing, but I think it hardwires maybe to our DNA to a, like a re, a daily reboot, a, a thing. I think yeah. It's a thing. Yeah. A new day. Another, you know, so, yep, there is, it's, it's simple things, but you can drive a lot of inspiration through the yeah. ordinary things. It's just, maybe it's a common thing, but the, it's something uncommon happens. Right. Like you say, you know, like in a spiritual way or a conceptual way or, or just an awe-inspiring way. Exactly. Look up awe and you'll know what you're really saying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I want to open this up for questions as we get about 10 minutes. Um, not that we're going to sit and wait, but I mean, if anyone has questions, I am watching um, the chat. I haven't been able to, I, I can't, I don't know. I just can't write and talk and <laughs> I, know, all I, need, I need a staff anyway. Um, so yeah. So if you have questions, pop them in here. We'll see them. We'll answer. We'll keep talking in the meantime, but if anybody has questions or thoughts or, or what have you to, to add to the, to the conversation, this is, this is important. This is something that um, I want us all to, participate oh, yes. into whatever takeaways yeah takeaways yeah. are super important someone's asking about prisons um yeah I'd i mean well, how cool is that uh, yeah i could talk about prisons for a lot longer than 10 minutes but yeah prisons alter the way that the camera sees the world obviously and of course how you see the world so i've been working a lot with prisons and i think it was just an alternate way to see things unlike a deliberate method like a double exposure a mm -hmm. shooting through a prism is just very random and serendipitous so you as you move the prism things are you know it's like when you were a kid you had a kaleidoscope and you know like things were so magical so the prism yeah. shooting through like that there's a certain magic so yeah they are the prisms have been a lot of fun to work with uh so i you know working with them with a singular subject or just Multi, uh, different subject landscapes. All I want to ask you a technical specific question. I want to, but I want to answer because this question is really quick mm. to answer. Mm -hmm. who, Please. who is, who is the researcher of awe that I mentioned? And that is Dacher, uh, D-A-C-H-E-R, Keltner, K-E-L-T-N-E-R. Um, I can probably put him in the comments. I have to do all the, uh, well, I can go back yeah. and edit, I suppose, later. You're sitting there trying to add all this oh, stuff. Maybe there's um, a post after this. Yeah. <laughs> we'll yeah, try to do that. yeah. So Dacher Keltner, that's a good place to start. And then the rest will probably unfold from there. Um, so when you shoot prisms, like what, what is the prism? What are you shooting? I mean, is it a kaleidoscope? One of those little cardboard things or like, what no, are you it's Which the effect that? is like that like how like when i was a kid i had one so that's the inspiration but actually it's a piece of glass it's an actual crystal so i i find the best way 50 millimeter lens as far as when we go too far in technical part but you actually hold this in front of the lens and you can rotate it as you're right. shooting and then everything changes and you're just it's like trippy fun and you know it is beautiful so i try that shoot, now oh oh goodness yes yeah you, you should i want to do it with medium format I want to see what medium format does with that because that could be really fun. Oh, it, it's very dimensional, interesting, and uh, it's very simple. So, I mean, anyone pretty much can do it. You can hold the camera, and, but you can use different lenses. The 50 is just sort of, you know, it's such a, it's just the right. It is. It, uh, so it kind of works out where it's not too heavy because a lot of times holding camera in my hand and yeah, but, but it's beautiful. The effects can be um, very, very beautiful. Oh, that's so, so Cool. Okay, so here's another question. Can you speak to the photographic choices you made when finding your photo voice and subject, edit style, feel, etc.? You want to go first? Oh my goodness, that, that sounds like a parent question. <laughs> so I'll let you well, go. Well, <laughs> but yeah, thanks. That's because I got to read it again and kind of get clear on the question. Okay, can you speak to the photographic choices? Okay. Thinking. I'm thinking about this and kind of. That's a huge question. It's very broad. Um, there's another question after it. So I just want to answer this briefly. Photo speak to the photographic choices. Yes. Okay. So I'm not sure if this will uh, completely address it. Um, so you'll have to tell me. But um, for me, it became like when I was learning, for instance. I When I was learning how to shoot, like, landscapes, for instance, I, would, I looked at a lot of 
how people shot. And then I, I maybe imitated them at first just to try it out to see if I could even hit that mark. Wasn't <laughs> my intent to be like them. It was just like when you learn to sing, I want to learn to sing like Barbara Streisand. So I'll sing like her for a while. And then, okay, now I get how she does it. And how would I do that, right? You take it that next level into you've learned a thing. Now you go, now how would I apply what I just learned to my own uh, way of doing it? So that was like step one about photographic choices. And then taking it a step further, the pho photographic choice. And this applied to editing like when I first started to, to do this years ago. Um, I would go, what is the feeling here? Sure, it's a rock and a tree and a sunset or whatever. But what's the story? What am I, what, who are you like? What's the story? I always ask myself that. And the reason I ask myself is sometimes if I go, okay, I'm blank until I ask a question. Why? Because your mind wants to answer questions. So if you ask your muse or your creative mind or whoever, you go, what's the story here? And then you wait for an answer or ask it again until you do get an answer. It will shape how you go at it. Oh, the story is like you were talking about with the, uh, with the Bay Bridge. It's the movement of the clouds. It's the magic of time, it's time and light together in one, oh my God, goosebumps, here we go. <laughs> and that tells you then the framing, that tells you the time, where you want to do a long exposure. Like with me in water, when I shoot water, like I'm in the mountains, so I, we have a lot of streams and rivers. And I couldn't, it, I know in the ocean, a lot of times we want the water to kind of go foggy, right? Like kind of almost disappear, but we don't want that in streams. I like the movement, so that means ready. I like to see the movement. So house ready. I want a little bit of etherical, you know, ethereal feeling. So that means I'm going to start, depending on the light and the, you know, everything, maybe about a half a second, a third of a second, and go from there, depending on um, the result, house ready and where it gets misty and, you know, like that. So that's how I use my voice and what I want to say and what I feel. That's how I imprint it on, on my images and it tells me what settings because I know by looking whether uh, it, it has the feeling or not. Do I get goosebumps and go, oh, oh my God, that's it. Oh, my God, I love myself. I want to go make out with myself now. Right? <laughs> so that's how I personally do it. And I do the same thing when it comes to subjects, edit style, feel, and everything. Like that's the one-stop shop for me. I absolutely I, I think the same way in, in a nutshell let the subject guide me you know how I want to do something so obviously you know you have a vision of, of what it will be like what you want it to be like and the technical part will follow you know the creative part so mm -hmm. so I hope that answers your question now here's another question when you were in the zone your mind clears all of the nonsense of every, oh, it's a comment. Okay, this is a good comment. When you're in the zone, this is important, you're going to be in the zone, your mind clears of all the nonsense of everyday life, and that is when you find yourself doing your best work and the time flies by. I think that's interesting. We work with light and time, but when we're in the zone, it becomes timeless. It is time. That is so profound because everything uh, else, it just stops. No, You know, I, and I've been in that zone and all of a sudden like boom there's lightning yep. behind me I had no idea that you know like a storm is coming because you get so involved and so yeah. focused on this the no time no the no time no no, no space place nope that's a good place to be and that's where your best yeah. creative work is so that's very yep. true that's where the that's where the muse lives and she is something else choices somebody writes choices yeah choices you know there's always choices but there's the choices that lead you to something more than just a photograph are the ones that are answers to the questions you ask yourself, in my opinion, if you want like a tip, like how do I crack the nut? You know, some people are like, I'm trying to be in the, in the zone and I'm trying to do it, but I don't really know how. Start just getting quiet, slowing down your breath, you know, leaving it out for a couple of seconds before you take it in, which sort of, you know, what Deb described as the experience before the sun pops over the horizon kind of puts you in that zone. A sense of awe will put you in that zone instantly. But, you know, you can do it yourself by slowing down your breath and uh, asking yourself questions like, you know, what, uh, what, what, what's the story? Where's, what do I love? Like, this is when I first started talking. When I first started, because it's tr tricky putting all this stuff into words. And when I first started talking about it, um, 
I talked a lot about what do you love? You know, do you love patterns? Do you love, I mean, something simple. Do I love patterns? Do I love uh, textures? Do I love trees? Do I love water? Do I love color? What color? What light? What, what do I love? And let your, let your mind answer. You know, shut up a minute. <laughs> you know, <laughs> cut it in half, divide it by two. You know what I'm saying? And let your something inside go, oh, yeah, I love sunsets. I love I love sunrises too, but sunsets are like the crescendo to me. Oh, so, I, I, I love them too. Yeah, mental. I'm totally there. I'm just yeah. closer to the sunrise. But I, what you're saying, yeah, so don't put so much pressure on yourself because yeah. in doing that, that you really exclude the serendipitous, a creative process, and and just in feeling the energy and the excitement of what's happening. So I know some yeah. people say, I gotta get this. You know, I have to nail this and. You know, so yeah, so you make mistakes. Too much pressure. Too much pressure. Too much pressure. Yes, oh my God. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, enjoy the process. That's the main thing. Just, you know, because if you love what you do, it's going to show through. Yeah, it, because it's quantum. Because yeah. when you love what you do, it embeds itself in the light that embeds itself in your pixels and Bob's your uncle. So it's like that. So we are at the hour. I don't want to keep you, all of you, including you, Deb, more than. Uh, oh, thank you so much for having me. We, I totally we, appreciate it. So oh beautiful. my God, this is so exciting. So I got to catch up on what you're doing, catch up on what you're thinking, catch up on how you're doing all in one. And I love it. And we should do it again. Oh, you all absolutely. Want, would you all show up if we did it again? <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's uh, let the creative muse continue. And um, let's you and I stay in touch and just, uh, I don't know, throw some in the air now and again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thanks so much for having me. I totally You're so appreciate welcome. it. Thank you. Thank you Take for care. making the time. Okay. Yeah. And thanks, everybody. We'll, we'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye. Bye.